Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Youth Man. I just finished watching an incredible Dolby Atmos movie. Now the movie itself wasn't amazing, but the Dolby Atmos effects were bar none the best Dolby Atmos movie that I've actually had a chance to hear in my home theater. But before we get into the video, if you're into home theater, audio and video, hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell notification so that you'll be notified when the next video drops. All right, guys, I just finished watching an incredible movie, and we're going to talk about that in this video. Now, in the past, I've used uh, Blu-ray discs like Blade Runner 2049, a lot of great Dolby Atmos content in that. I've used Ready Player One. That's got some really good Dolby Atmos uh, sound effects in it as well. And of course, I've even used my Dolby Atmos demo disc, which has, uh, there's probably five or six, maybe seven different movies, kind of clips on that from Mad Max and some other ones. And so that also is a great Dolby Atmos disc. But I can tell you right now, this disc right here blows these away big time. And this disc is none other than Gravity. Now this is an incredible sounding movie. Now I'm just gonna say up front, it's not the most amazing movie. I enjoyed the movie, but it's not like, oh my gosh, that movie's phenomenal. But I really did like the movie. I liked the movie, but the sound effects and the way that they produce the Dolby Atmos content, bar none, by far, is the best sounding Dolby Atmos DVD that I have heard in my home theater. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with my setup, my room is 13 foot by 19 foot with 10 foot ceilings. It's a dedicated theater room with a 150 inch uh, screen. It's acoustic transparent, which allows me to have my three uh, speakers, my left, my center, and my right directly behind the screen, as well as my dual subwoofers. And so I have dual SVS PB16s for my low end, and then I've got Klipsch La Scala's uh, RS62 uh, version 2s for my sides and my surround backs, and four CD uh, 5800C version 2 Klipsch in ceiling speakers. And so in this setup, I was powering it with a Marantz AV7705 that I'm reviewing, as well as an Emotiva XPA11. And I can just tell you right now, this setup with this movie sounded amazing. Really, really fantastic. Now in this video, I'm gonna share with you a few samples from the movie and tell you specifically what I liked about those scenes. I'm gonna try not to do any spoilers. Really, there's not a lot of spoilers in the movie, but basically the premise is Sandra Bullock and George Clooney are in outer space. And so if you think about it, outer space doesn't have sound. There's no sound. There's nothing for sound to bounce off of. There's a lack of gravity. There's a lot of reasons why there's no sound in outer space. And so the directors and the audio engineers of Gravity had to come up with some creative ways to um, immerse yourself using sound as well as this gorgeous, beautiful um, scenery, you know, overlooking the earth and, and the stars and so forth. But during the movie, the movie starts out, they're in outer space and something happens and Sandra Bullock gets sent flying off into outer space. Excuse me, I've lost visual, Dr. Stone. And one thing that was really cool and one way that they used Atmos uh, for a really good effect was as she's flipping, George Clooney is talking to her in the radio. And so the audio engineers wanted it to be almost like, um, you know, wherever his voice was in relation to her spinning would be where you would hear the sound. And so you would literally hear his voice come from the far back right, uh, you know, the right rear Dolby Atmos speaker, and it would pan up to the front, and then it would go to the very back left. And But it was just like this right here. So as she's flipping, the sound is moving with it. Very, very cool effect. There was another scene in the movie where um, the camera starts coming really close to her helmet. 
And so as it gets really close, you hear, you know, this certain sound from Atmos and the surround speakers. But as the camera gets really close, eventually the camera goes inside her helmet. Now think about this. The sound that you would hear outside versus the sound that you would hear inside a helmet is going to be two totally different things, right? And so the audio engineers were really creative with that. And so as you enter the helmet, the sound completely changes and it sounds like you're in her helmet. And so they used Dolby Atmos to help create this believability in this movie. There was a third sequence in the movie where she's in uh, this space, or not spaceship, but she's inside this um, space station, I guess. And there's a fire that takes place. And there's some explosions. And again, since there's not um, sound in outer space, a lot of times when stuff is exploding, you don't hear like an explosion like you would say, for instance, in Ready Player One when stuff is blowing up. Uh, so it wasn't the same. They, they really had to get creative. But in this scene, there's a fire that catches inside and there is some explosions and she's trying to escape this fire. And so she's kind of going through the, you know, as fast as she can flying through uh, the space station and she's going through different channels and she comes to a lid. And so she climbs in this chamber and she goes to shut the lid. And you can hear literally the fire when you're watching the screen, the fire is above her. And so you hear this blazing fire going on in the Atmos channels and in those uh, speakers. And so then when she shuts it, it gets kind of quiet a little bit. And then all of a sudden you hear, and there's like banging going on and it's all overhead. Again, incredibly uh, developed, incredibly um, crafted sound for this particular movie. Again, doing the best that they can to add to the believability of the movie. And then as we get to the end of the movie, there's a scene where there's some water rushing into her space capsule. And the water's rushing in and you hear it from all around, a little bit from overhead, but mostly from the front, from the sides, as water's rushing towards her. But as this spacecraft is filling up with water, eventually her head goes underwater. And as her head kind of bobs underwater and up, underwater and up, you hear the Atmos channels kick in and then they stop. And then they kick in and then they stop. Dude, I'm telling you, that was incredible. Really, really enjoyed that. And so there were just all these spatial cues that they used through this movie as things are flying by. Of course, you know, you're hearing them overhead. A lot of times it was voices. So you would hear voices you know, just coming from, depending on relation to where she was at, maybe George Clooney was talking because there's only two characters in the movie, but as he would be talking to her, they would use the Atmos channels for his voice a lot of times. So that was really cool. And then another thing that really was pretty amazing, really an ingenious um, effort on their part, was not only did they take things like sound effects and voices and use that for the Atmos channels, but they actually use the music score to, to go through the Atmos channels as well as the uh, surround speakers and of course your front speakers. And so as the music was playing, they got real creative with the music score. And again, kind of as she's flipping. So not only did, you know, it would, they just said that basically it would be a lot different if, and it wouldn't really sound natural if she's flipping and you got this sound that's mainly coming from your front three channels. And so they wanted to create that essence of, man, she's continually spinning and flipping and turning and, and twisting. And so as they would do that in the movie, they would use the audio effects of being able to control the Atmos um, objects and move that sound in almost like a three-dimensional space to be able to create that feeling of, man, there's motion going on in this. 
And so not only were the Atmos um, you know, sequences great, even just the cinematography was really, really cool. Um, it definitely a, a different type of movie. In a lot of movies, they use a lot of jump cuts to kind of hide scenes or, you know, to hide action and make it seem like it's more intense and, and dramatic, you know, especially like fighting scenes. You'll watch fighting scenes and they'll cut and cut and cut and cut and cut and cut. When you watch a John Wick, a lot of times his movies are just like, you know, and they're cutting really, really fast to kind of hide, you know, what exactly is happening. You just see all this, you know, arms are swinging and cuts and this and that and steals his gun. You're like, how do you even steal his gun? Well, in this movie, they use just a lot of long sequences and they're really slow sequences a lot of times. And so you really get this idea of, man, this is really happening there, you know, for her to get from this edge of the uh, spacecraft to this edge over here, there, there weren't these jump cuts that you're like, well, how does she get from A to B? You physically saw her moving, you know, hand over hand, grabbing a hold of, of the bars on the outside and moving down this spacecraft. And so it was just a really, really cool movie. And so guys, I'm just going to tell you right now, go out and pick this up. Now, here's a couple of things I want you to know before you just go buy this. Number one, they made a couple of versions of this, okay? So don't go and get just the Gravity Blu-ray. If you get that, it does not have Dolby Atmos track in this, okay? So what you're looking for is the Gravity Lux or the Diamond Lux Edition, L-U-X-E. And so I'll post a link to it down in the description. Now I'm gonna tell you up front, it's not super cheap. It's about $60 for this. And so inside they give you this kind of cool looking uh, book. It's it's kind of has a different feel to it. It's just real thick, almost has like a magnetic feel to it. But inside you get two discs, so you got the regular disc. And then over here, this is kind of like just some additional special features. And I've watched some of those and it's a lot of, you know, how did they make the movie? How did they create this element of, um, you know, spaciousness? And how did they get the element of her floating in zero gravity? Um, because there's not a lot of great ways to do that. And this movie I think was made back in 2013. And so even the technology then, um, they didn't have what they do even nowadays. And so to make this movie believable, they walked through kind of some things that they did. And even the movie score, like how they made the music, they didn't want to just use orchestral music. And so there's this one guy uh, I was watching, he uses this really bizarre kind of machine, but it actually is spinning and he's running his fingers along this uh, round, I don't even know what you call it, but this machine that makes music with his hands as he plays these musical notes as this thing is spinning and rubbing across his fingers. I'm a, a glass harmonica player. Uh, I've got two instruments with me today. This rotating instrument, which strictly speaking is called the harmonica. And then he also would take glasses like wine glasses. And the other instrument, which is wine glasses mounted in a frame. I suppose, strictly speaking, we'd call those musical glasses. I'm a specialist in playing both of these instruments. And he would use his fingers, you know, they'd be wet. And so each glass was filled up with so much liquid. And so as you rub your fingers across the tops of the glass, it would make this kind of, um, you know, just orchestral kind of beautiful sound. And so they would use that. They would use human voices a lot of times to make the sounds. And so um, it's just a really, really cool movie. It's definitely a lot different than uh, probably any other movie that I've seen in the cinematography, the way that they staged it, um, especially the sound. The sound, I'm telling you, if you've got a Dolby Atmos setup or even probably a DTSX, it would probably up mix to that just fine. But definitely, man, go out, pick this up. Like I said, I'll have a link to it down in the description. You can check that out. Um, but it's just a phenomenal movie, man. It'll by far, way better. And, and I like Blade Runner. Blade Runner's got some cool spaciousness. But what they did with Blade Runner is you just hear this canopy a lot of times. And so they'd play music and you would hear this, you know, this enveloping. And so it was enveloping. You felt like you're in this big spacious area 
but it wasn't anything like gravity. Um, the way that they manipulated gravity, the way that they manipulated the individual cues, the audible cues in each speaker, and tied that in with what you were seeing visually on the screen was just really honestly, it was, it was a, it's a masterpiece. And so if you look on Amazon, they've got like 7,000 positive reviews on this movie. Uh, I think it was a Academy Award winning uh, movie. And so, um, like I said, plot, cool. Um, action, you know, it's not like this humongous action. Now I can say this, it's very suspenseful. And I say suspenseful, it's very dramatic and constantly. So it's almost like you're going from one problem to another, to another, to another. And so a lot of times you're kind of like your emotions are just kind of tense the whole time. During the movie, you, there's not a lot that you actually just get a chance to just sit back and enjoy the movie. Like, oh, this is beautiful. This is cool. Uh, most of the time, it's like they're trying to figure something out. They're in a jam. They're in a predicament. And they're trying to figure out how in the heck are we going to get past this. And then as soon as they get past that, they're faced with another conflict and another drama. And then all the way up to literally the very end of the movie, um, it's just kind of this intense sequence. And so, um, but like I said, guys, I just want to share with that with you. Um, by far, I just finished watching it. I think this thing is awesome. Um, so go check that out, pick it up. Um, but like I said, make sure you get the Diamond Lux edition. Because if you get just a regular one, regular Blu-ray, it's not going to include the Dolby Atmos. And that's what I believe makes this movie so incredible. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, you guys be blessed, and we'll catch you in the next video.